The Execution of Montrose by William Edmonstone Atune. Read for LibriVox.org by Tricia G. Toronto, Ontario, January 2011. Note. James Graham, Marquis of Montrose, was executed in Edinburgh, May 21, 1650, for an attempt to overthrow the Commonwealth and restore Charles II. End note. Come hither, Evan Cameron, come stand behind my knee, I hear the river roaring down toward the wintry sea. There's shouting on the mountain side, there's war within the blast, old faces look upon me, old forms go trooping past. I hear the pebrock wailing, amidst the din of fight, and my dim spirit wakes again upon the verge of night. Twas I that led the highland host through wild Lockerbur's snows, what time the plaided clans came down to battle with Montrose. I've told thee how the Southrons fell beneath the broad claymore, and how we smote the Campbell clan by Inverlochy's shore. I've told thee how we swept Dundee and tamed the Lindsay's pride, but never have I told thee yet how the great marquis died a traitor sold him to his foes o deed of deathless shame i charge thee boy if e'er thou meet with one of assent's name be it upon the mountain's side or yet within the glen stand he in martial gear alone or backed by armed men face him as thou would face the man who wronged thy sire's renown Remember of what blood thou art, and strike the caitiff down. They brought him to the water gate, hard bound with hemp and span, as though they held a lion there, and not a fenceless man. They set him high upon a cart, the hangman rode below, they drew his hands behind his back, and bared his noble brow. Then, as a hound is slipped from leash, they cheered the common throng, and blew the note with yell and shout, and bade him pass along. It would have made a brave man's heart grow sad and sick that day, to watch the keen malignant eyes bent down on that array. There stood the Whig West Country lords, in balcony and bow, there sat their gaunt and withered dames, and their daughters all a row and every open window was full as full might be, with black-robed covenanting carls, that goodly sport to see. But when he came, though pale and wan, he looked so great and high, so noble was his manly front, so calm his steadfast eye, the rabble rout forbore to shout, and each man held his breath, for well they knew the hero's soul was face to face with death. And then a mournful shudder through all the people crept, and some that came to scoff at him now turned aside and wept. But onward, always onward, in silence and in gloom, the dreary pageant labored till it reached the house of doom. Then first a woman's voice was heard, in jeer and laughter loud, and an angry cry and a hiss arose from the heart of the tossing crowd. Then as the Graham looked upward, he saw the ugly smile of him who sold his king for gold, the master fiend Argyle. The Marquis gazed a moment, and nothing did he say, but the cheek of Argyle grew ghastly pale, and he turned his eyes away. The painted harlot by his side she shook through every limb, for a roar like thunder swept the street, and hands were clenched at him, and a Saxon soldier cried aloud, Back, coward, from thy place, for seven long years thou hast not dared to look him in the face. Had I been there with sword in hand, and fifty Camerons by, that day through high Dunedin's streets had pealed the slogan cry, Not all their troops of trampling horse, nor might of mailed men, 
not all the rebels in the south had borne us backward then once more his foot on highland heath had trod as free as air or i and all who bore my name been laid around him there it might not be they placed him next within the solemn hall where once the scottish kings were throned amidst their nobles all but there was dust of vulgar feet on that polluted floor and perjured traitors filled the place where good men sate before with savage glee came Wariston to read the murderous doom and then uprose the great montrose in the middle of the room now by my faith as belted knight and by the name i bear and by the bright st andrew's cross that waves above us there yea by a greater mightier oath and oh that such should be by that dark stream of royal blood that lies twixt you and me i have not sought in battle field a wreath of such renown nor dared i hope on my dying day to win the martyr's crown there is a chamber far away where sleep the good and brave but a better place ye have named for me than by my father's grave for truth and right gainst treason's might this hand has always striven and ye raise it up for a witness still in the eye of earth and heaven then nail my head on yonder tower give every town a limb and god who made shall gather them i go from you to him the morning dawned full darkly the rain came flashing down and the jagged streak of the levin bolt lit up the gloomy town the thunder crashed across the heaven the fatal hour was come yet i broke in with muffled beat the larum of the drum there was madness on the earth below and anger in the sky and young and old and rich and poor came forth to see him die ah god that ghastly gibbet how dismal tis to see the great tall spectral skeleton the ladder and the tree hark hark it is the clash of arms the bells begin to toll he is coming he is coming god's mercy on his soul one last long peal of thunder the clouds are cleared away and the glorious sun once more looks down amidst the dazzling day he is coming he is coming like a bridegroom from his room came the hero from his prison to the scaffold and the doom there was glory on his forehead there was lustre in his eye and he never walked to battle more proudly than to die there was color in his visage though the cheeks of all were wan and they marveled as they saw him pass that great and goodly man he mounted up the scaffold and he turned him to the crowd but they dared not trust the people so he might not speak aloud but he looked upon the heavens and they were clear and blue and in the liquid ether the eye of god shone through yet a black and murky battlement lay resting on the hill as though the thunder slept within all else was calm and still the grim geneva ministers with anxious scowl drew near as you have seen the raven's flock around the dying deer he would not deign them word or sign but alone he bent the knee and veiled his face for christ's dear grace beneath the gallows tree then radiant and serene he rose and cast his cloak away for he had taken his last look of earth and sun and day a beam of light fell o'er him like a glory round the shriven and he climbed the lofty ladder as it were the path to heaven then came a flash from out the cloud and a stunning thunder roll and no man dared to look aloft fear was on every soul there was another heavy sound a hush and then a groan and darkness swept across the sky the work of death was done
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.